for the world. How many going over to Lamert Park today for the Kwanzaa celebration? We got to hurry up and get out of here. And go to, I got to go to Kwanzaa. What is today? Well, what day? What day? What day? Is this Imani? Imani. So the greeting is the Barigani. And the response is not in Jema, Asante, Barigani, as we normally say, but when the greeting is given during Kwanzaa, Barigani, which means what's happening? What's the news? You answer during Kwanzaa according to the principle of that day. So you say a Barigani. You say Imani. A Barigani. So let's try it again. Barigani. And Imani means faith. Is that what it means? It means faith. Faith in our God. Black God. Black Jesus. Black Mary. Black Holy Ghost. Black angels. You black people, aren't you? Would you rather me say white God? White Mary. White Jesus. White Holy Ghost. White angels. Who taught you that? Who? Yeah, two words. <laughs> this is Imani Day. And I, tomorrow, I believe, is the, the, the day of the great feast. The feast is called what? The Karamu. The Karamu. It's close to the Arabic Kareem. It's the Karamu. And some of us will be going over to the founder's Heikalu. Heikalu means the temple. Over to the founders, hey Kalu, the African, um, the, uh, do they call it the African American or the African Cultural Center? Uh, we got to talk about that. Because we ain't Americans, we never have been, and we never will be. You say you believe in Malcolm? Malcolm says, no, I'm not an American. Is that what Malcolm said? He said, I'm one of the 22 million victims of America. <laughs> He said, I have not witnessed any democracy, but we are the 22 million victims of Americanism. It's not a democracy. It's nothing but disguised hypocrisy. He said, no, I'm not an American. I'm not a flag waver. You won't find me a flag saluter. He said, we have not witnessed any American dream. It's only been an American nightmare. So then what in the hell are you wearing Malcolm's button for and his T-shirts and his sweatshirts and Malcolm posters and you running around talking about you in America because Jesse Lewis Jackson is trying to get you to crawl back on the plantation. Right. Not to a building a black nation. You are not in America. Don't be ashamed to call yourself black. You are the black man and the black woman. You are the original black man and the original black woman. You are the original Chinese, the original Japanese, the original Australian, the original North American, South American, the original Indian, you are even the original European. Before the white man ever got into Europe, you were there. The Grimaldis and others. Everywhere on the planet Earth, you are the original man and the original woman. And we can prove it. So you are black. Don't be afraid of that. And certainly you don't line up with all the other little nations with their little rags and their flags. That shouldn't worry you. You're not the rag and the flag people. That's like at the United Nations or the OAU or the other places. You are God's people. Your flag is the universe. That represents 76 quintillion miles throughout the distance of the diameter of the universe. Not some little dot, some little spot, some little space some little place, some little rag, or some little stuff that you identify with. You don't line up with the other nations. You are not a race. You are God's chosen nation, the creator's nation, God's chosen people. So he gives you a flag that represents your domain. And that is the universe. And that means all the other little flags and rags and places and spaces fit into your Universe. That's when you know yourself, black man and black woman. That takes you past Africa, past America, past Los Angeles, past Californian. You were black before you were Californian. You were black before you were an African. You were black before there was ever a place called Africa. In fact, fool, you were black before you even born. <laughs> Yeah.
If you're a female now, you were black before you were a female. Is that right? If you're a male now, you were black before you were a male. Before sex was determined, it was already determined that whether whatever it turned out, it was going to be met black. So you were black before you were anything. In fact, you were black before you were everything. Now, how you going to duck black? You better get back to black. Get back to black. Is that what we should do? Yes, Talk black to me. Is that what we should do? Yes, All right, brothers and sisters, again, I thank you. Do we have any questions? I can only take one or two. What time is it really? Because we've got to get to... What time? 4.45, what time? 4.40, what time is it? Now let's say 4.26. It might be 325, 343, so might be 5, but we don't know. We need somebody, don't we? And I'm telling you that that man that is raised in our midst is the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. That's the man today. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan. That's the man today. If you love Mark, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is the fulfillment of Mr. Garvey's work. Huh? If you love Hannibal, if you love Shaka, if you love Patrice Lumumba, if you love Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, if you love Amilcar Gabral, if you love Queen Nzinga, if you love Queen Kandasi, if you love Tusa Salovato, Enric Christoph, Desaline the Ferocious, Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, Gabriel Pre Whoever, Harriet Tubman, this man is the fulfillment of them all. If you say you are a son and daughter of Elijah Muhammad, then you should be with Louis Farrakhan, because Farrakhan is Elijah's man. Farrakhan is Elijah's man. Farrakhan is God's man. I'm telling you right. And they're planning his death now. But we have to let them know that if anything happens to him, we're killing everything right. That ain't right. That's in sight. We ain't spare nothing. See, we want the Bloods and the Crips to know that we kill us too. But we know who to kill. So if you a real killer, then you come on get with the real, real killers. That's right. There it is. Right. Are there any questions? No, One. Yes, sir. Two. Oh, Lakeham. Lakeham Salon, soldier. I had stayed in my Shahala a couple of years ago. Yes, sir. And I identified with Muslims all over the world. Teach. What are Muslims uh, uh, of uh, African... Uh, we with you, man. Take your time, man. How are we to, how are we to identify and see in terms of uh, Muslims, say, for example, of Iran or Afghanistan or any other Muslim of, of that? It's a good question, my brother. Muslims all over the world are our brothers and sisters. We're Christians, too. We're black revolutionary Christians. We believe in a black revolutionary Christian theology. We believe that Jesus is a black man. He's a black messiah that is a black man that is born from among us. He's not a spook and he's on scene today. We are the original Hebrews, the black Hebrews, those who have crossed over. The scriptural prophecies that speak of good and the fulfillment of those prophecies, we are the people to fulfill them. But now in particular to answer your question, how are we to relate to the Muslims of the world? Our leader is over in Mecca right now. Did you know that? He's in Mecca right now. Or either he just came back, but he's been there for the past few weeks. He met with the Rabatah. He met with the World Muslim League. That's the top scholars in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, where the Kaaba is the center of Islam in the world. He's meeting with their top sheikhs, the top ulama, the top maulanas, the top imams. 
He's meeting with that top Quranic scholar, the top scholars in the Hadith. And I know that Allah blessed him. I know that he took care of the business. 